Hey everyone, it's George from the Race Space Podcast. Today I have Garfield Griffith, who's the Senior Director of Special Events for Spartan Race. And the World Championship is taking place between the 2nd and the 4th of December in the land of Gazelle, that is Abu Dhabi. Now I wanted to find out what is going on in Garfield Griffith's mind when you're preparing for such a spectacular event. In 2021, Spartan Race had the World Championship in Lima, and it was, if not one of the most brutal events, in the history of Spartan Race. So I wanted to find out what is it that is going on in Garfield Griffith's mind in order to prepare for this obstacle course race. What are the challenges that he faced and what are the cultural differences? Now, on this podcast, he started off with giving his experience in obstacle course race. Now look guys, Garfield is an OG in the obstacle course race. He has been doing obstacle course race for over a decade. Now he shared his experience in the fitness community, in the sporting community, and the obstacle course race community as well. What I really like in this podcast is he explains some of the challenges that he faced in doing the event in Lima. But what I gained from this podcast is that he looks at challenges as an opportunity and he still continues to move forward ahead with plan A, plan B, plan C and quite a lot of other. And this time Spartan Race is visiting Abu Dhabi for the second time with the World Championship taking place in Al Watba. And he did give some really sound advice to international athletes who will be visiting for the world championship and he also gave some inside scoop on what you can expect at the event and listen guys listen to this episode because he did give out some tips on what is it that you can do in order to prepare for this event what i really liked about garfield is that he's got a really strong passion for obstacle course race and one thing which i always try to identify when i'm speaking to people is are they merging their passion with what they are good at and i have this feeling that garfield has got it right He's merging his passion with what he's good at. Now, towards the end of the podcast, he also discussed his choice of music and his passion for cigars. Now, listen, guys, if you have a passion for cigar, you definitely need to get in touch with Garfield because he's really passionate about cigars and he explains some of the details and intricacies between cigars. And if you know of any iconic places where there is a cigar community, be it in Abu Dhabi or other parts of UAE, definitely mention them in the comments below. And if you do have any feedback or suggestions, mention them in the comments below. Now, if you do want to get in touch with Garfield, all of his contact details are mentioned in the show notes below. Now, before we kickstart this episode, I have an important message from Spartan. So check this out. Spartan is a global fitness brand with a 10 million strong community. We create transformational events, experiences, products and content to help people, companies and teams tear down boundaries and expand what they believe to be possible from day one. Nearly two decades ago, we've been champions of human transformation. We live to help people get outside, eat healthy, and develop habits that lead to a life of constant progress. With a family of brands, we push people from every corner of the globe outside their comfort zones and immerse them in a world of tough fitness and elite sports. We do this because when you can face and overcome adversity head on, your potential is limitless. This year in December, in Abu Dhabi, the land of the gazelle, Thousands of athletes and spectators will gather at the Metropolis in the desert to compete for Spartan immortality. This is a unique opportunity to watch the world's best obstacle course race athletes compete for the World Championship and have your group conquer the course themselves. For Spartan World Championship ticket details and registration to the program, see the link below. And there is also a discount code, so see the show notes below for the discount code and the registration link and hopefully see you at Al Watba. Now let's kick start today's episode. Firstly, Garfield, thank you so very much for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. No, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Let me just turn my radio off because that's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> so what's going on, sir? What can we do for you? Yeah, I just wanted to firstly thank you so very much you know, for taking your time in terms of doing this podcast because what I really wanted to find out in terms of from a race director's point of view, what is it that is going on in your mind? And you've been responsible for creating the most brutal event <laughs> in the most brutal condition in, in the history of Spartan Race. So just wanted to get, you know, your insights in terms of, you know, what goes on in planning and what is the cultural difference that you experience. But before that, you know, Garfield, I just wanted to check, you know, how has your day been? I mean, because you've been traveling quite a lot recently as well, right? Yep, 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 yep. had a couple of races. Uh, I was in California, I was in West Virginia, and then, of course, flew halfway around the world to be here. And how has the weather of Abu Dhabi been treating you as well? Pretty good, actually. It's, I mean, it's hot, obviously, but it's, you know, it's winter time, so the mornings are nice, the evenings are nice. 
And it's a little crazy in the afternoon. And is the weather kind of similar that uh, resembles Florida as well? Yeah, it's not bad. Florida's a lot more sticky. <laughs> we, we a lot more humid. Yeah, yeah, we have the humidity there. But uh, no, this is really pleasant. I've just been out there for the last hour or so, so I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit hot. Brent, thank you so much once again, you know, for doing this podcast. But what mm-hmm. I wanted to quickly check is, you know, can you tell the listeners a bit about yourself? Because I believe you've been doing obstacle course race for almost over a decade, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, yeah. yeah, I've been uh, kind of putting working in this industry since about 2011. Yeah. I, actually, I actually ran a Spartan race in Miami and got kind of hooked on running them. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah, but I was an event person before that. I used to manage music festivals and bars and nightclubs and all that kind of fun stuff. So I kind of, it was a, it's a fun transition. I thought I'll try and put a mud run on because nobody knew what OCO was back then. And that was it. I kind of switched over and started, uh, yeah, came to work for Spartan about six years ago. Now you're the senior race director, isn't it? Yes. Actually, I just changed. I just now, I just got a, a small change in, uh, so I'm now the uh, senior director of special events. Oh, excellent. So, so would that mean that you'll be doing the other obstacle course race, such as, you know, one which got announced yesterday, the OCR World Championship, merging with Spartan Brand? Oh, the uh, the independence. So I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely going to be involved in that some way. And as part of, you know, it's a collaboration. So uh-huh. um, it's, that event's going to kind of stay as it is. But I'm definitely going to, um, I'm going to be helping and supporting in any way, any way that I can. Brilliant. That's awesome. Now, well, before we start, what I wanted to do is, you know, I wanted to ask, when you found out that Spartan Race is doing the World Championship in Abu Dhabi, what was your immediate reaction to that? And did you ever visit UAE or Abu Dhabi before doing the event? Um, so I found out in, um, wow, well, was it? I'm going to go outside, actually, because there's people in the office. So it's probably easier to talk outside. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's not too loud out here, is it? No, no, it's perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, so, so I found out um, in, um, I think it was 2019, actually, uh, early 2019, that, oh, we're, hey, we're, you know, we're working with the Abu Dhabi Sports Council. We're going to look at doing the World Championship in 2020 in Abu Dhabi. So we started the planning, did everything, and then, of course, COVID came and threw everything upside down. Um, so the 2020 race was cancelled, and then so we kind of restarted planning, you know, in the in the COVID time. Uh, so I visited in uh, 19, then I visited again in early 2021, and then again. So I, I so three times I was here before we actually put the race on last year out in uh, Liwa, <laughs> and then I've been here twice uh, this year prior to this one. So uh, yeah, it's like my fifth or sixth time here. Doing the uh, the fun thirty hour travel day, yeah. And did you ever get a chance to visit Dubai or other parts of UAE as well? Or? I have not had a chance. It's been work, work, work. A lot of my team they stayed. But I have a, I have my family back in in the USA, so you know when I'm done, I, I'm I have a look around. I you know I love the desert and everything, but I didn't get a chance to go and sightsee. I went straight back to my kids. Yeah, and I was just going to ask that you know your kids. You often tend to do obstacle post race with them as well. So what is their reaction when they found out that it's in the Middle East? I mean, were they inclined towards it? Did they want to oh, join they, thought it, they yeah. thought it was so cool. I talk to them all the time. You know, I, I chat on Facebook and, uh, uh-huh. yeah, they think it's very cool that dad's out in the desert running <laughs> around and making people climb monkey bars and ropes and things like that. So my boy wants to run. My boy and my daughter both love running these things, but my son's 15 now, but he's been running them since, well, he's 10 years. So it went since he was five. Uh, doing wow. these. Oh, he's got, yeah, hundreds of medals as well. So, but he wants, to, he wanted to come out, but fortunately, well, daddy has to work, so I couldn't well, keep an eye on him. No, no, what's great to see in the obstacle course race community is that the second generation is also getting involved because Hobie mm-hmm. calls son. Yeah, Hawk. You know, he is, and it's great to know that, you know, your son most likely will be competing with Hobie calls son as well. So that's, oh, I don't know. Him. I don't know about that. <laughs> my boy, my boy's, my boy's all about basketball right now, but, uh, <laughs> He, he, he do, he's like me. He does it just for fun. I don't, I don't chase Ryan Atkins. I just, I hang around and chat with volunteers and then, you know, sit in the mud pit for a while. I'm, I'm one of those kind of runners. Yeah. And that's something, you know, which you get a kick out of it. I mean, yep. so what I wanted to find out from a race director's point of view, 
what is it that is going on in your mind when you're doing, let's say, a world championship event, when there are regular events in this time that you know, might be a bit different? So what is it that is going on in your mind and what is the discussion that takes place between you and Joe Cena, the board of directors? You know? So, uh, so I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the core process is, is very similar, whether we're doing it here, in China, on the moon, wherever it is, you know, the core, let's call it the template, if you will, uh, of how we do it. We have a race planner, uh, we have a race director, we have the construction manager, so we all have our parts, and obviously the race director keeps an eye on everything. Um, really, the conversations are about transitioning, you know, we can't just walk into the local hardware store like we do in the U.S., we go to Home Depot and get our lumber. Here, we have to find somebody on the ground who can help us, maybe speak the language, and then we say, we need this, we need that. And, it, you know, not everything is as easy to find here as it might be where we're, you know, you know, depending on what part of the world we're in. So it's not too bad here, but it's a case of just, um, you know, the time difference makes it difficult. Nine hours is a whole day, like a work day. So that makes communication tricky because if I'm talking to someone who's, Hey, I just need you to do me a favor quickly. Can you go and see if you can find this? It's not quickly because I have to wait 24 hours until it comes around. This, we go around the sun one time and then he'll be like, no, I couldn't find it. Okay. Can you let's go and try and find this? And then there's another day we got to wait until. So sometimes the, the time difference is the, probably the biggest hurdle. Let's say obstacle just to keep it relevant. <laughs> Yeah, I totally overall, agree. And just, overall, it's, yeah. uh, the planning process is, is very similar, believe it or not, between the, the two. And when you're doing events, let's say, you know, in other parts of the world, what are some of the cultural differences that you've found? And that could be both positive or negative, particularly doing, let's say, an event in Lima or Abu Dhabi. Let's say if you were to do it in UK or US, because I'm sure there are a couple of cultural differences, and there might be positives. Some negatives as also. What are your experiences on that? Um, I mean, you know, cultural differences, you're going to find them everywhere. You know, I've, I've lived all over the world uh, for various reasons. Um, and, you know, as you say, there are the pluses and minuses. And it's, I don't think they're really classed as a plus or a minus. They're just different. You know, what one person thinks is a plus might be a minus to somebody else. So I would hate to sort of say, oh, that's a minus. No, it's just how it's done here. Um, you know, I find sometimes um, getting things getting things uh, nailed down is the best description. It can sometimes be difficult in different parts of the world when it's a case of this will be here at this time. And, you know, in the UK, we're very, very, you know, we're very punctual. We're all about, you know, being on time and being efficient and all that. Or, or you go to like Europe and Germany, those things. Japan is very, very efficient in a certain yeah. way and everything has to be almost clockwork. But certain other cultures that I've worked in, could it be like I live in South Florida, which is, you know, a lot of uh, South America, Latin American side, where it's a lot more relaxed. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, not everyone's as uptight as us British people. <laughs> so it's a bit more relaxed and laid back. And, yeah, you'll get it. I'll get it to you today. Yeah, tomorrow. Today, tomorrow. At some point. So, that you know, that is something that as, as someone who's, whose job is details and making sure all of the pieces fit together. That can be a that can be a stress at times when you're not sure if something's going to arrive on time, but you know you have to have it, and it's not there. <laughs> That's probably totally, the totally one agree. That, yeah, totally agree. Now take us back to your experience that you had last year, which was in Lima. I do think that was, if not one of the most brutal events, probably, yeah. and doing it back to back. What was your experience from that, and what was the learnings, and what are some of the challenges that you particularly faced? Oh, yeah, so Lewa was a fun one. Uh, the biggest challenge for Lewa really was the fact that it was, you know, four, what, three, four hours out of Abu Dhabi and two hours away from the nearest hotel. So, I mean, you know, two hours from the hotel, that's a long, we work every day. You know, my team, we're here for three weeks, and we work every single day for three weeks, no days off. All the way through. And each day we start at seven and we finish at about seven. So it's about a 12 hour day. If you add four hours of travel per day to that, it really, really started to wear people down. And you know, I mean, uh, I, even though I'm, <clears throat> even though I'm British, I, I live and, you know, I've been in, in, in the USA for 20 plus years. My family's American and I, I celebrate Thanksgiving. 
you know, it's a big holiday, thanks. A big family. You know, we missed it. A lot of my team missed it. It was just it was two days ago. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, you know, and then, you know, working basically 12, well, 16 hours every day for three weeks straight, it, it'll wear you down. Um, the other challenge is we're just getting things. You know, as I mentioned, sometimes it's easy. They just pop out. Oh, I need a box of screws. Oh, I need some handles for this. Yeah, you're four hours into the desert and it's a case of like, that's that's a process. You have to make sure you have everything. If you miss something, it's like, well, wow, that's four hours back to Abu Dhabi to the industrial center to find a, you know, a concrete ball or something like that. So that was the the big one of the other challenges. You know, we 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 camped. We had this camping idea, but I don't think, um, and we weren't tracking on it as you know, uh, as a company coming in from the U.S. Because when we went to visit. Liwa. It was quiet. It was beautiful. I mean, those dunes, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. However, we were not tracking on the fact that it was also one of the busiest dune buggy locations on the face of the earth, especially during the 50th celebration of the, you know, the national day. And we're trying to camp and sleep after 12 to 15 hour days. And we did not sleep for 20 minutes a night, just buggies and buggies and buggies. But you know, we were there. That's that's their playground. You know, we came in, um, so there's nothing you can do. You just got to kind of suck it up. So that was the challenge. It was tough. I'm dealing with, you know, 60, 70 staff who had no sleep and doing a fairly stressful job. You know, it was, it was tough for, as a race director, you know, or as a people manager to kind of keep everyone from killing each other. I totally agree because, <laughs> because in that heat, in that extreme weather, and I was camping there all, all night as well, and I yeah. totally agree, the noise at night, and I was hoping that maybe after an hour, the noise would go down. No. The noise <laughs> <laughs> I ended up sleeping, so we had, um, so you probably remember they had the kind of, the, the finish line was the, the yeah. bleachers and the grandstand area, so we had a small office underneath there that we worked out of. Yeah. And I was sat, it was like three o'clock in the morning and I was sat there. I was like pointless trying to sleep. And I went inside and I was like, Oh my goodness. I think this door is soundproof. And I just curled up in a ball under my desk and I slept there. <laughs> and it was the best, <laughs> the best three hours of sleep I think I've ever had. That is absolutely great. And one of my experiences that I noticed when, when camping at night was for some odd reason, the sound just kept getting louder and louder. And I was hoping. I think it was end. deliberate. I, there, there, there was definitely some people who didn't really want us there, you know, and I totally respect that. This was their playground and we came in, this big company, putting on a world championship. And I think there was some like, let's, let's keep these people away. Cause I remember there were people just outside our tent, just sitting with their foot on that, on the gas pedal. They weren't going anywhere. They were just revving and revving for 30, 40 minutes straight without going it. So, you know, I think they were set, they were sending us a message, I think. And what I it was, re- it was it. received. <laughs> <laughs> and what I wanted to find out, Garfield, in terms of what about the international athletes? What was their feedback and reaction to the entire event? So, um, so the, what I got from the athletes, uh, at least who I spoke to, you know, Ryan and, and Lindsay and those guys, they loved the course, they loved the, the challenge and the, and the beauty. I mean, you can't mistake. It was, it was fantastic. It was such an iconic race. Um, which was good. So it was worth all of the, the sacrifices that we all did. Um, unfortunately, you know, I mean, a lot of these athletes, they couldn't sleep. And these are, you know, these are finely tuned machines. They need to get their rest. They're going to run. So yeah, that was not ideal for them to not get sleep. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we've moved to Liwa, uh, to, uh, Awafa. Because right now, you know, we're here and we can, um, you know, people can go back to Abu Dhabi, have a nice cozy hotel room. Or have a swim in the pool, and then you can drive here on race morning and have a race and go back. So uh, I think it's going to definitely change the dynamic a little bit. Although Leo was great, and we have amazing yeah. stories now, um, this one is a little more uh, cozy, <laughs> if you will. And now, what I wanted to ask is about uh, Al Watta. What advice would you, let's say, give to international athletes who haven't attended the Leo event last year? Oh. The second mm. advice is for, you know, who are the first timers going into Al Watba. What advice would you like to give them? And this is purely for the international athletes. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're coming out, the big one is, and I, I know uh, a lot of the athletes last year, they got the gators, you know, they wore the gators to keep, to try and keep the sand out. That's a big thing. 
I mean, yeah. you, I'm sure you, you were there. So, you know, to be honest, you're never going to keep all the sand out. It's, it's coming in whether you want to or not. But those gators, I know I was talking to Ryan Atkins and he said his worked really, really well. So I would say look at getting some gators because there's a lot of soft dunes here, like Lewa. You know, there's a lot of hard packed areas like the Sapkas. So there's a lot of times you can really start to open up and that's just great normal standard running. Um, but yeah, we got dunes and we got Steve Hammond here who's, uh, one of our legendary course guys. And I just was with him today. We were looking at some of these giant dunes and he said, yep, we're going to send them up there. I said, okay, Steve, you're the boss. So, um, I would say make sure you, well, it's a bit late to practice, but make sure that you are, you are good on hills. <laughs> Get oh, on the stair. Get on the stairmaster and and practice, or just run up and down stairs for a while because there are going to be some big sand dunes again that you're going to go up and down. And of course, the other one is just you know, goes without saying, but hydration. You know, always start your hydration long before you get here. And if you can get here a little bit early, uh, again, I'm sure people have already booked their flights, but you know, acclimatizing and getting rid of the jet lag can't yeah. hurt because um, I know some of us come a long way. I mean, you know, I. I traveled and it took me like 33 and hours of travel with with the time difference not actual travel but you know that jet lag it'll it'll kick your butt totally 100 percent agree at least now the weather is relatively better yeah so, you know, yeah you this is beautiful right i'm sitting outside right now and it's, it's just gorgeous out here and it's such if you and if anyone's actually staying at this resort well done <laughs> because it is absolutely magnificent and one question what i wanted to ask regarding the video video footage during the race is there any possibility, let's say, to have a buggy or a car, you know, follow the athletes? Will that make it a bit easier? Because following some of the pro athletes with the GoPro, I think, would be extremely tiresome for some athletes, right? Well, we do. I mean, we have uh, what we call rabbits, and the rabbits will okay. follow. But, I mean, a lot of these are, like, you know, almost Olympic uh, trail runners, so they're very fast. Yeah. And, of course, they're not doing the obstacles. Um, but, yes, it's very hard. But we will have uh, buggies as well with uh, the media team. And we should probably have some drone footage. I think we're looking to try and do some uh, actual live broadcasting out of this one. So, uh, yeah. So we have buggies and we have a media team who are going to be driving around and rabbits who are also going to be getting footage. Now, see, I did my first Spartan race in Abu Dhabi. That was at the golf club. And back then, there were also a couple of beers at the tent. But I'm not sure if we are having any couple of pints or burgers at the tent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a, uh, there's, uh, we're not doing, I know that normal, a lot of the time we do the, the finish line beer, which is yeah. more of a, more of a US European yeah. thing. Um, which again, you know, you mentioned the cultural differences. Obviously yeah. that's one of them. Yeah. Um, but we are, because we have an international crowd, we do have a, like a, a beer area. People can go and if they want to have a beer after the race, they can do that in a separate area in down by the obstacles. Uh, we have a bunch of obstacles that you can see from the finish, from the, the festival area. So, uh, yeah, and we're going to have some burgers and different kind of food trucks. So it's very going to be a lot of good stuff in this festival area. It's very going to be very busy with uh, with vendors and sponsors. Um, a lot more than last year, but I think, because we're a lot closer to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot more for spectators to do. That is excellent. And uh, based on your experience in designing this course for the World Championship, what is the time frame you're looking at, let's say, for the male and the female athletes? In comparison <clears> to, let's say, the previous event. Um, well, so, well, so last year the the championship race was the uh, I think it was the Beast. Was it the yeah. Beast? Yeah, yes, it, it was, was the beast. beast. It was the Beast. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this year it is the Super. We kind of changed it up because uh, yeah. the various reasons that went was changed. One of them I think is because it's a little more spectator friendly. It's a little faster, a little more uh, uh, energetic, but uh, it still has a bit of distance to it. It's like you know sits in the middle nicely. Um, so as far as distance. Um, what is it, 6, 10, 10k? I don't know. I mean, these guys are going to be quick. I mean, they're definitely going to, the dunes are going to slow them down. We were very surprised at how quickly people did Liwa last year. Yep. Um, I mean, that was like, was it an hour? 20? Uh, it was very quick. Two hours quick. and seven minutes, I think. Three no, minutes. No, two hours, yeah. yeah. That, that's quick. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think, I think that we're going to have people probably hit, hit close to the hour mark on this one. And I do think, you know, with VJ Jones, I think he's definitely going to be there for the Super event. I think he would definitely smash it. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say. I, I'm, honestly, I don't have a list of the names. I mean, there probably is one somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not trying. I know Ryan and Lindsay because I spoke to them. Um, uh, well, they, 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 they tagged me on some stuff. Um, I hope BJ comes because I know he wasn't here last year, but I'd love to see BJ. I'd love to see a lot of the, uh, the guys from the US and the UK come out. 
uh, and uh, try their challenge. I know that Pepper's coming out from the UAE and, yeah. uh, and a bunch of those guys. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great weekend. Absolutely. And uh, one thing which I wanted to ask is, you know, some of the athletes who did do the Spartan Lever, they did Spartan Romania as well. And surprisingly, what they said that Spartan Romania was much tougher than Lever. Because after, oh. doing the lever, yeah, after doing the lever, they were like completely shattered. This is the toughest thing. But when they went to Romania, they were like, this is the worst. So do was, you it, think, was it mountainous? Or? Uh, no, they were just proper athletes. But it was a lot of uphill and downhill. No, that, sorry, that's what I'm saying. Was it mountains and hills? Yeah. Was it? Okay, so that, that's... You know, that will get you. You know, I mean, the sand, when you, I guess when people get used to the sand, they kind of got in the rhythm. And then mm-hmm. coming, down, coming down the dunes, but yeah, we have, I mean, we have a race in the U.S., the Utah, Utah Beast. I mean, it is, it's like nearly, I don't know, I can't do the, the calculation, but you're up about 10,000 feet. So that's about 3,500 meters to the top and down. And it's just a giant rock. And it is a beat down. Even Ryan Atkins is like, like, wow, that was, he, well, of course, Ryan being Ryan, that was my fa- one of my favorite races ever, which means it was tough. Um, I would say that the Utah race was probably harder than Liwa, although Liwa was difficult for different reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, the Utah or Romania, I can see why yeah. people would say that. And uh, one question what I wanted to ask is, you know, and this is something which you have mentioned earlier as well, like keeping the supply chain management and the transport and logistics. Are there a couple of challenges that you're facing, let's say, at an international level? Not necessarily, let's say, within, you know, Abu Dhabi or al Wadba located. So are you facing any challenges and how do you go up with any last minute challenges? Because I'm sure there would be last minute changes that you had to come up. So what, are you, what is your thought process going on behind that? So my, my process, and I think this any race director has a very similar process. I basically always have a plan B. Um, in my case, C and D. Um, <laughs> <laughs> extra plans. I mean, you know, Lee, for those who didn't know, our, we had containers, uh, containers all on a ship with all of our obstacles. Everything, all of the branding, the t-shirts, the registration computers, everything. They never made it to Lee. That was not our equipment. Oh. None of it arrived. It all got stuck in the China, South China Sea. So you talk about last minute. Yeah, we had to find an obstacle race. We had to reach out to Spartan Arabia. We reached out to Spartan Asia. We basically found printers who would make t-shirts. Everything we did in Liwa was done last minute, the whole thing. So we're very proud of the fact that we pulled it off without many people noticing. But yeah, that was, you talk about last minute, that's as last minute as it gets because nothing arrived. We had nothing. This one, we have our kit. We got, we got it, came in, we brought it in. Um, so we're, we're looking a lot better there. We got our, our shirts and our t-shirts and our merchandise. So that's all here. Yes, last minute things. Yeah, there's always last minute things. You know, we had some stuff with the hotel just this afternoon. They're saying, oh, well, you, you can't go here. You can't go there because there's some fossil dunes and some old, you know, historical stuff. So we're having to kind of, you know, pivot and move the kids course around and move this, this. We just moved Dunkwall to a different location. Those things are normal. I mean, we do those. That happens all the time. So. This one, yeah, last minute things, but um, nothing uh, that I would say is uh, too alarming. And are there any surprise moments, let's say, that our athletes would be joining for this world championship? Should be aware about or keep an extra caution or prepare additional for it. This is kind of like a hidden tip that you want to give to them. I don't know about a hidden tip. I said they, a lot of the people are going to be quite surprised to find that they run around a lake here in the middle of the desert. That's going to be a fun one. A, oh, it's, okay. but, yeah, we found a small lake that's, uh, that's out there. Um, no, I don't think there's any major sort of, uh, wow. So if you're on the beast, we've got a really gnarly double sandbag that's going to, uh, that's going to beat a few people up. So if you, <laughs> Yeah, if you're doing the trifecta, that, that beast sandbag, and it's Steve Hammond, he's, he doesn't mess around, so that's gonna have a, a little bit of, as you say, meat and potatoes to it. Um, outside of that, now, I mean, we just got a great course, I'm really excited for everything, um, great festival area, some really good, a huge finished corral, we have this amazing multi, the rig at the end, I think it's gonna be 
I, I don't don't quote me on this, but I think it's gonna be something like beta into twister into multi rig or multi beta twister. It's a whole combo rig like we did last year. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. And then we got the, the the spear throw near the end, which I know is always part of my French. No, I won't say, it, but it pees <laughs> up pees off a lot of people because that can <laughs> that can make or break a championship having a spear that close to the finish. Correct, yeah. And this might be the last year where they're planning to have 30 burpees on the Spear, isn't it? Next year. No, there's no, there's no, there's no burpees on the, uh, championship course. This is all, it's all penalty loops. Oh, just penalty loops, okay. Yeah. So okay. the penalty loop, yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be, they're, the all, uh, the elite, um, championship races. That's the current plan. Uh, I mean, still open, open in age group, everyone, they'll still be doing burpees, you know, we love our burpees, but just for a case of policing, not keeping an eye on it and, you know, trying to keep pushing towards a, a fairer race. Uh, the other burpees just had to go. We had to go for something that was easier to keep an eye on. It's very hard to count burpees of like 40 people at the same time who just missed this. And the last few questions what I wanted to ask Garfield is, what is your dream location to have, let's say, a world championship or even a regular Spartan event, which hasn't happened yet? Ooh, that's a good one. Dream location for Spartan race that hasn't happened yet. Well, I know that we have one. It hasn't happened, and it was supposed to happen next. I think it's next year. But there, there's, a, I know there's talk of a Jamaica, um, which is a trifecta, which is actually going to be one of my events. Um, that I think is going to be amazing. Uh, I live down in, I live in, down in that area anyway, on South Florida. But um, I don't know. I think that'd be uh, something Mediterranean would be kind of cool. I'm a fan. I, I I lived in Cyprus when I was very young. Uh, I was a fan of Cyprus. I think that'd be a, that'd be an interesting uh, venue. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's a good one. I think the Caribbean is the one that I'm looking forward to the most when that I happens. That location. Oh, I, that location. You know I have the answer. I have your answer. I, one, one that we looked at starting, and I wasn't there, and because of various reasons we couldn't do it. But we were going to do a Cuba race. Oh yeah. Many years ago, and it all kind of fell apart, and whatever reason, I wasn't I wasn't with Spartan then. But um, I think I would love for that one to happen, not because I love cigars so much, but just because I think it'd be <laughs> well, maybe that as well. <laughs> in fact, I was just going to say, and I was going to send you a text message as well, that in Abu Dhabi there's this place called Saint Regis, which is like yeah. a massive cigar club. Oh, oh, okay. So, you know, oh. You have to, you have to you. send me the information after the, after we've done this. That'd be amazing. Uh, absolutely, I definitely will. And what I wanted to find out is, let's say if the event would take place in Cuba, or let's say in Jamaica, would you be taking your kids along with that, or for so, the event? Yes. So actually, it's funny enough because I, I have a race uh, this year uh, uh, in sorry next year in uh, the Bahamas. <clears throat> We're doing an event, uh, okay. and I'm actually I'm actually going to take my kids over to that one. And, cause, and honestly, from where I live. I'm not kidding. It's probably a 21 minute plane ride. <laughs> so <laughs> not too bad. At all. I could almost throw a stone at uh, Bahamas from my house. So yeah, we're probably going to go over there at Atlantis, which is a beautiful place, and then I'll probably take my kids. Excellent. And I just have uh, two questions, not obstacle course related, but before that, yep. do you have any message, let's say, to the athletes or people who want to join the Al Watba? Any special message that you have for them? I would say, um, you know. The, the desert, if you've, you know, if you've not been here, if you, if you haven't, if you, I mean, I, I've seen the desert on TV and movies. It is nothing, absolutely nothing compared to standing in it. It is mind blowing. It is life changing. So don't think, um, I've seen people post it. Oh, I don't want to run in sand all day. It, come and try it. It is a life changing experience to do a race out here. I was out today standing on the dunes, looking out and just into, just kept going. Yeah, come do the race, try it out. We have a sprint. I mean, we have a three, yeah. a three mile, five k race. You can do it. You can ease into it, and uh, it's it's life changing out here. Come try it. And from next year onwards, Spartan is also preparing for shorter race duration as well, about three kilometers. Yes, yes. So we're going to actually do a test three kilometer race here, which is our three k uh, try uh, the team, team relay. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do? It's kind of we're kind of killing two birds with one stone, if you will. So we're doing the team relay and I said, well, why don't we do the 1k loop? And it can be a kind of test for our 3k because, you know, yeah. 3k is going to be three 1k loops next yeah. year. So yeah, we're giving that a test and uh, we even have, uh, 
again, it's, it's something we're just testing. I don't know if it's going to be part of what we do, but based on the Olympic decathlon and pentathlon, we're actually going to try out these uh, laser pistols that we use in the Olympics. So the team relay actually gets to uh, to try out these laser pistols. And I think they had something in Philippines as well, right? Like yes, absolutely. They've done it there. And uh, so we're going to try it here, and then we're going to try it again in the U.S. And we'll see. It might it might take. We'll we'll see how it goes. That is absolutely excellent. And the last two questions that I have is, you know, not related to obstacle course race. Now, when you say, I mentioned about Florida, I did have to ask what genre of music that you like. Me, my first. So I don't know if you know, but my history. The reason I ended up in Florida, I was a DJ. Oh, okay, so, excellent. And I, I DJed all, all over the place, and I was uh, one of the rave DJs, the clubs. EDM, oh, okay. as they now call it. wasn't even called EDM then, but back then, trance music was my thing. Um, but so now, to be honest, my personal taste in music, oh wow, I listen to everything, but I like, uh, old school. I love some jazz, I love Frank Sinatra. Um, oh, yeah. I love, I'm an 80s, I'm an 80s kid, so I love my 80s music, going back to that stuff. Um, classical, I even listen to classical, I'll sometimes, you know, Especially because my job is so stressful at times, I'll just sit and I listen to some classical music with my cigar, and I'm a I'm a happy race director. <laughs> I listen to extreme heavy metal. Okay. So the moment you tell anyone about Florida, they forget about everything because Florida is known as the home place for death metal. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the home place of extreme death metal. I so, never knew that, and I've been so, there twenty years. <laughs> so in the heavy metal community, the moment you say Florida, people. Will be Oh, this is the place where actually death metal. So <laughs> that is so far. I, I guess I'm just too old. I, I mean, because I used to, I used to, you know, I manage clubs and I was a yeah. DJ and I was. That's how I did events because I, I used to put on these big uh, EDM events. So I guess I just moved in different circles. To me, Florida, I think of raves. <laughs> you know. And the next question that I wanted to ask is about your passion for cigars. Can you talk to us a very brief about, you know, when did you start getting into cigars? Oh, because gosh. I follow you on Instagram and you constantly post a lot about cigars as well. So yes, yeah. I, I know. I'm, I post a lot of the same nonsense, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I think it started when I, so when I, when I finished with the nightclubs and everything, I decided to take a break. I used to smoke cigarettes, which was a bad habit of mine for many years. I stopped uh, when my son, before my son was born, I thought I, I have to stop. So that was 15, 16 years ago. Um, and I also decided to, I'm, I thought, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop everything, I'm going to start exercising, because, you know, nightclubs, you get into a lot of bad habits. Um, it's too easy to stand there with a drink. So, I stopped everything, and I thought, well, I've got nothing now, I am, I'm bored. So I'd go out, and I'd have a, you know, I'd have a Coke, or a Sprite, or whatever it might be, while my friends are drinking, and I was like, oh, I'll have a cigar. So I had a cigar, and it just, I don't know, there's something about it, there's something about just, you know, it's very hard to think about anything else apart from just relaxing. So it's, it's like a friend of mine said, and I don't really play golf because I'm not very good at it, but he said, if you ever play golf, just try and think about something else. And it's very difficult because you just, so I can't, I can smoke a cigar and I find it very difficult to wander off and get stressed about work because my brain just doesn't go there. Does that make sense? <laughs> my, it's so for some reason it's very cathartic to me. And then now I got into cigars. I can actually tell the differences and I can, I can, you know, sense, oh, this has got this and this, this has got like a leathery feel and this is just, I can even honestly tell where tobacco comes from a lot of the time now. I can, and is that know, just by the smell of it or? Yeah, do just by doing it for long enough. I know that, you know, I seem to gravitate towards that Nicaragua is they have a place called the Steli, which they call the, the new Cuba and, and they have a certain, a certain style. It's all about the soil, and I'm not going to go too much down a rabbit hole here. But it's you know the soil has a certain richness, and it gives the the uh, the, the leaves a certain yeah. sort of like a texture and a certain richness that I like. And you know you go to like they have a Connecticut, uh, believe it or not, a Connecticut leaf, which is a lot milder. Doesn't really do it for me. So uh, yeah, it's just a thing. But now I just I love it, and with my friends we sit, we share cigars. It's it's a hobby. It's like collecting stamps or collecting coins or collecting whatever, but you just happen to set fire to them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, people are very passionate about the garden. Yes, it's so, huge. Definitely. And that's one of the reasons what I wanted to say is, you know, you need to check out in Abu Dhabi a place called St. Regis. I'm yeah, going to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And are there any possibilities of you to visit Dubai as well, probably with you or with your family as well? Because Dubai, according to me, is more like, you know, 
of the, the city life in comparison, let's say, to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is I've heard, I've heard great things, and I, I have to go there, and I have to spend some time here. I'd like to come back with my wife and family, like you say. So, I again, I'm not thinking about work. I'm thinking about relaxing, yeah. which I find very difficult. That's why the cigars <laughs> help, um, you know, because my brain won't ever shut up. So, uh, I, I would love to come back. I've got made some very, very good friends here, really good friends. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love this place. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. Thank you so very much, Garfield, for doing this. Really, really appreciate this, you know, considering the fact that this is last week and you're extremely busy. So, you know, really <laughs> it's appreciate getting dark out here. It's, the sun's going down. We're about to call <laughs> it for the day and uh, go back to the hotel. And I'm going to have a cigar. That is absolutely okay. Thank you so very much, Garfield, for doing this. Really, really appreciate it, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, having me on. I'll speak to you soon, my friend. Thank you very much, Garfield. Have a nice Thank you.